Trade Association is trying to make peace with President-elect Trump. This is the trade group representing 40 of the biggest internet companies in the world, including Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Netflix, and startups from Airbnb to Uber. Silicon Valley largely opposed Trump's candidacy and found itself on the opposite side of his agenda on trade, immigration, and encryption. But in a letter addressed to the new administration, the Internet Association is trying to start a new dialogue, starting with congratulating the new president. The group's CEO, Michael Beckerman, joins us now from L.A. So first of all, Michael, have you gotten a response from the Trump administration so far? Have they even acknowledged your letter? Um, thanks, Emily, for having me on. Um, we, we've been in conversations, actually, with the Trump transition team from before the election, um, as we did with the Clinton um, transition team as part of this process. And we're looking for an open dialogue. Um, our priorities, I think, um, will be received well by the Trump uh, administration because we're talking about creating jobs and value and competitiveness here at home. That said, the tech industry came out almost universally against Donald Trump, save for uh, the investor Peter Thiel. Do you have fear of retaliation? You know, it, it, on one hand, it seems like a big chill could set in between Washington and Silicon Valley, or it's a big fight that's waiting to happen. We have an opportunity here. The election's over. We want to start with a clean slate. Um, I think every company and every industry um, is looking to uh, start with a, a clean slate in January when the new administration comes in. And again, um, it's the president's job to make sure that our economy grows and we have opportunity here at home. And the story of permissionless innovation is something that um, has helped our companies grow here in the United States and create value here in the United States. And I do think the incoming president will be receptive to our message. So what have companies specifically said to you about what they're most concerned about? Uh, I mean, a number of issues. I mean, I certainly, I think, you know, some of the rhetoric on the campaign um, was uh, a, a worry for, for many of um, our companies and executives. But when you look at the issues, um, such as uh, encryption, which was something that we had very strong disagreements with the Obama administration as well. We want to educate uh, this White House that um, encryption is part of our safety and security here at home um, and, not, uh, and not something that we need to have back doors because we think that'll weaken our, our security. Um, obviously, an issue like immigration reform was front and center during this campaign. Um, I think probably after they get done with um, border security and some of those issues, we, do can, come, we can come around to high-skilled um, workers and making sure that uh, these companies can grow here in the United States. Uh, let's talk about trade. Obviously, you guys support the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. Trump very clearly does not. What do you think the biggest risks are if things don't go your way? Well, I think, one, it's still in Republicans' DNA for free trade because it does bring uh, value to our economy and create jobs um, in the United States. And when you look at our industry, um, I would say the Internet is a great American export. 80% of internet users exist globally outside of the United States, um, but 80% of the jobs and value is here at home. Uh, and so some of the proposals that we had in our letter to um, President-elect Trump uh, will enable our companies to grow and be competitive around the world and create value in every single state across our country. And um, I know the, both, both candidates um, and both parties were very um, opposed to TPP during the campaign. But that doesn't mean that we can't move forward with other trade, um, trade programs to ensure that our companies can compete and grow globally. And what about net neutrality? Uh, we talked about this in depth uh, yesterday. It's, ve it's very unclear what Trump actually believes from a policy perspective, uh, but he was very dismissive of it in a tweet a couple of years ago. Um, you know, what would you like to see happen uh, when it comes to net neutrality when it's clear there could be some changes to the current policy? Yeah, on net neutrality, um, all we're asking for is um, to make sure that consumers have access to the entire internet um, and you don't have gatekeepers in between internet users and the sites they're trying to visit. And, and really, I think that's a bipartisan, um, that's a bipartisan uh, desire. Uh, both Republicans and Democrats have said that ISPs, service providers, shouldn't be blocking or throttling content. And that's all we seek. And, and that's what we have now um, with the proposal the FCC put in. And um, we're going to work with the new administration and Republicans and Democrats in Congress to make sure that that end result of an open internet um, that enables for competition to happen um, exists still. Trump is in the process of building his leadership team. The current CTO is Megan Smith, who worked for a very long time at Google. Who would you like to see in that position in particular, 
or any of these cabinet positions, uh, are, are there folks in particular that you think would be more sympathetic to uh, Silicon Valley and, and technology? Yeah, I, I do think it's important that we have that dialogue and that people from the technology industry, specifically from internet companies, um, go into the government. Uh, the staff, the um, appointed positions, the cabinet secretaries, so many positions in government um, will decide what kind of um, landscape we have for innovation going forward. And I would like to see more people like Megan Smith and like Michelle Lee at the PTO and so many others that have gone into the government from our companies and our sector to continue to do so. Uh, because this is our country, right? We want to make sure that people that are working in government understand that the internet is one of the greatest engines for economic growth that we have. Um, and it's people like that that will um, ensure that that continues. Look, Michael, I understand a desire to work with the, the president-elect uh, and, and to congratulate him on his win. But, you know, this is an industry that came out so vehemently against Donald Trump. And I'm just curious, what are, what are folks saying to you from these companies behind closed doors? Are they scared? Are they nervous? Uh, and if so, what are they most nervous about? Well, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're still in the early days, um, you know, right after the election. I think everybody's still digesting it a bit. But there is a recognition that we need to move forward. The election is over. Um, and this is not really our companies. I feel like um, internet companies um, have gotten a lot of attention on this. Um, but um, I don't believe there were any of the Fortune 100 CEOs that were formally for um, uh, President-elect Trump like they were for Mitt Romney, let's say, uh, in 2012. And I'm, I'm sure the president-elect wants to work with our companies just like we want to work with uh, the incoming government. And um, you know, we'll, we'll move forward for what's best for this country.